All right, let's continue the campaign. I said I was going to do it, so let's do it. Uh, let's see. So this guy has morale minus four because of the uh, religion penalties on him being away from home or whatever, wherever that is. Ah, there it was. Troops desperate. Yeah. So let's go ahead and put him in a settlement that does have uh, over 50% religious support, and that'll get him back uh, to where he needs to be. But before we do that, because you have to have the governor present in order to uh, build buildings, let's go ahead and put something in the queue in case uh, he takes over for whatever reason. Let's see. So I'll put the uh, blacksmith in the queue. That ought to be more than enough to be honest, but I could do a little more. Hmm. If I build a siege works, I can build catapults and trebuchets. So, oh, so I can build trebuchets. Fine. The problem with artillery in this game is it's so expensive. I mean, look at this. 400 florins to upkeep. I mean, I get the uh, recruitment cost because you have to build the catapult or whatever, but these guys are not armored or armed at all. And you could just get, like, a militia unit and they have way less upkeep. So, uh, not entirely sure that artillery is worth it in this game because they make it so expensive. Hmm. I'll just put a library in the queue. Why not? I can take it out if I change my mind. Alright, this guy's my faction leader. Oh, looks like he has not taken over the settlement for whatever reason, so yeah. Okay. Fine then. I said that I was going to wage war on Novgorod, and that's still the case. Uh, can't do it just this moment because we are not strong enough but I'm going to start taking steps to uh, uh, to weaken them and we'll see how that goes so this settlement uh, nothing really worth putting in the queue right now they've got a heretic and a bishop in our territory but we have four of these priests Albeit one of them has gotten even worse. He's lost his faith because of all the other outside religious people coming in. So he's pretty much useless. Uh, but at the very least, we have 51% pagan in this region now. Now we just need to focus on getting uh, this other region with the cardinal in here under control. And let me see, these are going up the right direction, right? So that's, I'll remember that. This one's like 38%, that one's 21%. Go ahead and end the turn and see how things look then. Huh, well I don't get what's going on. Still 38 and 21%. That's odd, because I have, I'm pretty sure I have a sanctuary in both these towns, which should be giving me 3% conversion bonus. Uh, I just have an altar in here, but that's still 2%, so what's going on? I don't get it. Um, I don't see any, like, heretics or anything that are... I'll just click on the settlement details. There is some heresy here, but I don't see the heretic. That could be a problem if those settlements <laughs> don't go up to 50%. And I don't understand why they wouldn't. Okay. Trade increase. What is this? Oh, that's the faction leader. Saying that he needs to be in a, a settlement. But uh, you'll see that his morale is going in the right direction. He's now morale minus three. Right. It's almost the new year. What is this? Why are you at my capital? Oh, by the way, I got these axe dudes for uh, taking back the city of Minsk. 
and they're pretty cool. They get an attack and defense of 10, so they're, they, they hit pretty hard, actually. And in order to uh, support them, I went ahead and bought some Ducal Spearmen. These guys are also pretty pretty good. Okay, well, I don't know what they're planning sitting right outside my walls. They may attack me. I don't know. We'll have to see. I think I can hold them, though, with this garrison. I don't think they'll be a problem. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, for now, I'll just end my turn. Well, these guys can't seem to decide where they want to go. Now they're back in uh, the province of Minsk. So, I mean, it's like, whatever. Oh! There's a cardinal in that province. Crap. <laughs> Am I just going to have to waste all my manpower on freaking priests? These guys are so annoying. But looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. So this is the settlement where I have the like theologians guild, right? If I go down, there it is. Yeah. So this is where I would have to train a priest if I had any. Uh, let me just see how much... I don't have any units in the pool, so it'll have to wait. Ah! These guys are annoying. But at least the uh, religion of Vilnius is going up in the correct direction. Uh, so looks like my treasury is very slowly going in the right direction. Let me go ahead and put this port in the queue. Just anything that helps me make a little bit of extra cash will be good to pull me out of this depression. And I believe I'm still paying the Papal States tribute for one turn. So when that is done, yeah, then I'll open up a new tribute. Ooh, Khwarezmian diplomat. Interesting. Maybe I should have talked to him, to be honest. Oh well, it, do it doesn't really matter that much. We're not, uh, we don't even share a border, so it's not that big a deal. In turn. Okay, time to talk to the Papal States again. Let's see, let's start another regular tribute. For five, five turns for a hundred florins. How are our relations, by the way? Um, can I, wait, can't I see? Oh, relations. We have very poor relations. Fine. So we offer a tribute as a gift. Still, the relations are pretty poor. But that's fine. We'll just keep doing it until they like us again. They were already abysmal, but they've gone up to very poor, as I've said. So we're now in the month of December. Hmm. Ah, yes, we have uh, more paved roads. Paved roads are just such a help in this game. I mean, I don't know if you'd noticed like how the uh, trade income was before I built the roads but now it's much higher uh, just look at all that trade going out to our soon-to-be enemies uh, Novgorod but it, as if that weren't enough uh, take a look it just uh, increases your strategic abilities too I'll click on one of these units in Vilnius look how far they're able to march on one of these dirt roads and then compare that to how far the same unit can march on a paved road it just it helps so much and since we have a paved road let's uh, think about what we can build here to make money let's make it into even more money <laughs> okay 
Yeah, sure, I can go for farming. That'll be fine. Right, and we're building docks there. So you have one more turn, faction leader, and then I can send you out to Palanga. You know, my treasury is doing so well, I might just go for the second tier of uh, manpower units come January. Just because I think that my treasury can handle it. But still, with this army marching all over my land, I'm probably suffering the effects of devastation out here. So 50% of supplies remaining. Compare that to, oh, only 33% up here. Alright, maybe I'm not doing so bad after all? Huh. But I may consider going the second, uh, the second tier just because I need more priests. This is the only city where I can really recruit them because they'll get like an extra uh, little piety mark and it's kind of a waste then to recruit them anywhere else. And I mean look at this state of things. 38% pagan, 25% pagan, 28% pagan. You know, the only place it's under control is in Vilnius. And uh, that's because I have like four priests here. And then it's 80% in Haradna because no one's even trying to convert there anymore. So it's not too good of a state. Oh, and I totally forgot about my spy over here. I guess I'll take a look. So Pol Polutsk, not very well defended. Piskov. Uh, I'm probably butchering these names, but also not too well defended. I think we could roll through these two settlements pretty easily. Oh, there's an army over here, though. So, yeah, I march out, attack this army, keep marching, lay siege to uh, Poltotsk, Polotsk, however you say it. Then march north again. Lay siege to Piskov, and I'm not gonna have enough steam to go on and lay siege to Novgorod, but uh, it would be a nice, uh, easy way to start the war, I think. Uh, I kind of need more family members, though. If I take a look at my family tree, yeah, I've got a bunch of little kids right now. Uh, gonna take them some time to grow up and yeah just four uh, family members isn't very much gonna cut it I thought I had five characters let's see one two three four five yeah I have five characters no one's over here I guess one of them is technically not a part of my family okay then Let's see. Guess there isn't anything I can do but just end my turn and we'll see what happens next turn when I go for uh, double the manpower units. Okay, another historical event. Oh, the English made longbows compulsory. Hmm. Yep, time to cycle through the levee. Well, let's do that now, shall we? So, I can go for 14, or I can do not quite double that, but double the cost of doing this. 24 units. Let me just read what else we got here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I already knew that. Yeah, well, what it doesn't seem to tell you is that, uh, oh, there it says, harvests are adversely affected by military service levels. You think that they would lead with that, uh, or they would go into more detail, but they're right that your harvest is not going to be as plentiful, uh, and that can be a problem if you're a really poor faction 
like me. I think here I'm just waiting, just waiting for it to uh, level up. Oh, I didn't even notice that the garrison was so lackluster out here. Let me take a look how many units do I have. Seven units. I may just want to go ahead and recruit some more units out here because, yeah, these woodsmen, I mean, they're cheap for a police force or whatever, but they're not going to hold a settlement for long. Yeah, definitely don't want to lose this settlement. Look at all the things that I can build. Speaking of, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and take my faction leader over. He's age 50 now. He's starting to get old. So it won't be long till he uh, kicks the bucket. Yep. Sending him over to the end of the kingdom. He doesn't have much left that he's going to be able to do. That army, yeah, they're still hanging around. Uh, I know it's slow going. I just uh, can't do much. Now the practice range doesn't actually do anything. But if I look at the, um, the building browser, then I think you have to go, oh, you have to go all the way to like the ultimate tier in order to get anything out of this. All right, so don't bother investing in the boyer unless you really love archers because then, I mean, you could just go for a drill square instead. Yeah, I don't really see it being worth it constructing a ballista ma maker when I could uh, build a, a foundry, I think it's called, where you build cannons later on. So I'm just going to probably focus on the uh, cannons whenever they become available. Let me see if that Khwarezmian diplomat's still around. No, he's not. All right then. Uh, guess I've just got to end my turn. We'll see how this goes. Going for twice the manpower units now. That's going to be twice the effect on my harvest. I'm, I, I imagine.